Bread to Win, brought to you by Inglis. The 2022 Inglis Yearling Sale Series. Entries now open. I'm Caroline CSC. Welcome to a new week of Bread to Win. Coming up, we head to Widdenstad's historic New South Wales base to see the new sire with blistering speed and as Swettenham Stud welcomes the sire of an Everest winner, the Blue Blood Rubik, to Victoria. And Arrowfield Studs, the horsey made you love racing. That's all coming up, but first, the latest from the bloodstock world in the Oz Horse News of the Week. Tough so you think Mayor for Seeker is the latest high quality lot to go through an English digital sale with the winner of three group races including the Group 2 Sapphire Stakes being offered as a highlight lot in the late August sale. Out of a winning Redoute's Choice Mayor for Seeker has won five and placed in five of her 15 starts. Final entries for the sale close on Wednesday August 18 with final bidding taking place on Wednesday August 25. After being passed in with a reserve of 500000 Moonlight Maid was sold to an undisclosed buyer after being the highlight lot of the Inglis early August online sale, while Shadwell Estate's Sul One was sold for $300,000. New Zealand's Cambridge starters welcome dual Group 1 winning sprinter Hallow Yume Zane for the new season. The son of Dane Hill's Kodiak won the Haydock Sprint Cup and the Royal Ascot Diamond Jubilee Stakes and is fully booked for 2021. His returning barnmate Al Manzor is equally popular with a full book too, coming off the back of sensational yearling sale results and the Group 1 successes for the offspring of his sire, Wooten Bassett. Sad news through the week with the death of Maccabi Diva's sire, Desert King, at the age of 27 at Lauriston Park in Victoria. Originally standing at Coolmore Stud, the son of Dane Hill also sired the tough front runner Desert War. And Master Craftsman, a magnificent four-time Group 1 winning son of Dane Hill Dancer, also died through the week at the age of 15. Generation General Bow grabbed by ingratiating. Homebreds dominated the three-year-old group races at Caulfield on Saturday. Darley's Victorian sire Frosted side ingratiating from the Light Fingers and San Domenico Stakes winner Obsequious. Ingratiating won the Vane Stakes, having placed in the Golden Slipper and Blue Diamond as a two-year-old, along with wins in the Talon Dirt and Maribyrnong Trial. Frosted by Tappet returns to Darley's Victorian base this season at a fee of $44,000. The Quisette Stakes was won by not a single doubt's daughter, Gimme Parr, a half-sister to Vinery Stud's new sire, Ole Kirk. Gimme Parr, seen here at just 12 hours old, is from Natural, a full sister to Black Caviar and half-sister to another Vinery Stallion, All Too Hard. Sadly, her breeder Rick Jamison's Gilgai Farm lost the dam of Must Crusader. She's got gears through the week. Subterraneans getting a gap and Tiger Malay the inside. The English graduate of the week was a great success for Linda and Lawrence Mons at Tyreel Stud as their English Easter Yearling Sale graduate Tiger of Malay was successful in the Group 3 up and coming stakes raced at Kembla Grange due to COVID restrictions in Sydney. Tiger of Malay featured in our English Easter Yearling Sale preview in 2020 selling to China Horse Club and Newgate Bloodstock for $255,000. He's by champion first season sire extreme choice from the more than ready mare Samba. The same cross identified as a super cross on a previous episode of Bread to Win by G1 Goldmine. Tiger of Malay traces back to huge broodmare influenced Dark Queen, the dam of Taj Rossi and grandmother of Golden Slipper winner Dark Eclipse. On Saturday his half-brother Samizdat won the Belmont Newmarket in Western Australia also giving Arrowfield studs not a single doubt a Saturday stakes double. Meanwhile while Tyreel bred and sold behemoth won the spring stakes in Adelaide on protest. 
With his sire not a single doubt, now a sire and grandsire of Golden Slipper winners, there's much excitement about the arrival of Anders at Widden Stud in 2021. They're also looking forward to the first foals of his barn mate by their own zoo star, Zusain. It's been another wonderful year for Widden Stud. Zoo Star continuing his great work as a leading sire. His daughter, Mizzy, sold for $2.2 million. Uh, you've been buying and selling million dollar yearlings and some fabulous mares. Yeah, it's a, been a great year. Um, obviously, plenty of uncertainty as the year started out, but really thrilled with the way the year's panned out. Obviously, Zoo Star's flown the flag, as you said, leading from the front. Another Group 1 winner, another 13 stakes winners. Uh, had another phenomenal season uh, right across the track and um, right around the globe. Uh, so it's great to see him back from the Northern Hemisphere after completing his third season up there. Uh, much excitement about Zoostar on a global scale. And yeah, we have managed to secure some nice mares. Obviously the value of Australian mares and bloodstocks really being realised and we're seeing that the sale rings and the online auctions, just the value of the Australian brood mares and to buy mares like Muse and Hummer Hummer uh, were great additions for the farm. So, uh, yeah, all in all, very pleasing year. In front, and as well clear. Ole Kirk runs to second. Always exciting having a first season sire, and Anders really fits the Widden mould, doesn't he? His sire, not a single doubt, a real breed shaper now, sire of a Golden Slipper winner and grandsire of a Golden Slipper winner, and of horses such as the champion sprinter Classique Legend, carrying forward the great Redoute's choice blood. Anders to me is an incredibly exciting young sire. He's just got an amazing turn of foot, uh, that blistering speed, his all speed, a stunning physique, a really interesting deep pedigree. So there's so much going for that horse and the response from the breeders has really backed up our high opinion of him and, and really the, the high value we put on him when we purchased him. Um, he's been incredibly popular as well. He was always an outstanding type, a $670,000 yearling. And so like some of the very best that throw to not a single doubt's dam sire, Rory's gesture with that bright chestnut, the nuggety sort of physique and, and plenty of white. Yeah, he is that real quintessential not a single doubt. Uh, he sums that up beautifully with his speed on the track and the physical type he is. He has amazing presence and everyone who's worked with him and been around him. I know Annabelle Nation rates him very, very highly as one of her favourite horses. She's got a really sweet spot in her heart. Kieran Ma and David Eustace are the same. They've really reinforced um, our belief in him and when we were looking to uh, purchase him, when I spoke to Kieran, David and Annabelle, the three people who'd probably worked closest with the horse, uh, they really gave you a true sense of confidence in him. Knowing him, his temperament, his type and his speed, they're all the traits you're looking for in a stallion and uh, they really um, emphasised that when talking to them and, and really reinforced our views and gave us the confidence to really step out of our crease and buy him. It really is an interesting pedigree, isn't it? His dam sire war emblem, a Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner from the Mr Prospector line and Sunday Silence is in there too. Yes, I mean, he, he does have a really international pedigree. Uh, Sunday Silence is a breed shaper um, in the same way, of course, uh, Redoots and Not A Single Doubt have been breed shapers here. Um, War Emblem's uh, a star in the American scene and uh, he's an internationally recognisable stallion in that pedigree. So, so many options when mating with this stallion and he does uh, really mate beautifully to so many of your mares. And I know going through our own mares, uh, mares to buy that really suit him, looking at mares on the farm to mate to him and, and talking to clients, there's so many options. So he does um, really stand out as not only the speed and the physical, but with that great pedigree you can really utilise. But it's all Anders at the moment, 150 to go, some four, five, six, clear. It's quite incredible that run he had, the four races he won in a row, starting with a Wyong Maiden. He went to Rose Hill, won on a heavy eight, had a short break, came back first up to beat Ole Kirk in the Rosebud before beating Peltzer and Mamaragan in the San Domenico. I mean, it's very rare for a colt to string wins together like that. Yeah, we really saw what a horse he was on the track. Just so dominant at Wyong. He put together those four big wins. Uh, of course, beating Ole Kirk, his ratings were through the roof. Uh, breaking 
obviously uh, a race record as well there in the San Domenico. They're all the sort of really wow moments when you look at a, an elite stallion, you say, do they really have that turn of foot and that speed that really makes you sit up and take note? And this horse had it and had it in spades. He does represent great value. I mean, the San Domenico has been won by a lot of exciting young stallions and, and Anders is great value, standing at just $16,500. He certainly is great value. Uh, as I said, the, the breeders have really reinforced that. He's full as a centipede sock drawer, as I said the other day. The reaction from the breeders when we announced him at stud was great excitement. When we announced the fee, they couldn't believe it. Such an outstanding prospect on the back of extreme choice. Obviously, as a son and not a single doubt, the champion first season sire, I get a slipper winner from only a handful of foals. And here you have this outstanding son of not a single doubt at just 15 grand. I think um, the breeders really see uh, value. They've really committed some wonderful, wonderful mares to him. And all the best breeders have been very quick to support us. And the breeding rights, uh, we did a handful of them. They were done in no time and the book full sign went up very quickly. So he is going to get every opportunity at stud and I'm sure when his yearlings uh, turn up at the uh, early um, yearling sales, the Magic Millions, the Classic, and then right through to the Easter sales, the buyers and trainers, they just know what a wow horse he is and they understand what type of stallion he is and, and uh, it won't be about the fee then, it'll just be uh, a real clamour to get those stock in his stables as well. Your son of Zoo Star, the Group 2 winner Zoo Sane, has his first foals arriving this season. He's also great value and he looks just outstanding here in the Widden Valley. He was the most popular first season sire again last year. He got inundated early and, and full book. I think he was similar to Anders as a great looking, um, very fast, well-bred horse at a great price. And the similar sort of breeders, those major hunter breeders and the astute breeders really jumped on him. So we covered 188 mares, excellent fertility. I don't think any stallion last year would have had any more mares in foal than Zusain. So uh, he'd be very well represented in the spring with some great foals arriving. So many of those breeders who I've spoken to are really looking forward to their arrival and, and keen to back up again. They see what Zustar's done, how successful the sire line's been through Encosta and Northern Media. Zoo Star and now Zoo Sane. The breeders who pick value and, and pick type have really picked this horse. So I'm sure he's going to be the gun young stallion in that bracket as we go through the spring with his first foals arriving. And your young sires, Trapeze Artist and Written By in particular, they're just so exciting. How are they getting on? A stallion like Trapeze Artist, there you have Snitzel's highest rated son. He's the highest rated sprinter in the world. He's just a magnificent physical specimen. He's really furnished into a great bull. We've seen some of his weanlings sell very well already and Bert Vieira is really keen to retain and race some of the best ones he's bred and you know make sure they go to the best trainers as well. I think he's the most popular first season sire of his year as well. He covered 180 mares and they were really high quality mares, a very high class son of Snitzel who's been very well supported and we're looking forward to getting to his yearlings to the sale next year and then onto the track. Written by is very similar to Trapeze Artist with his first crop yearlings to go to the sale next year. He will get a lot of very early types like himself, champion two-year-old, he won his first four starts. Of course he won the Blue Diamond like Extreme Choice but like Capitalist he's by Written Tycoon so we've seen the sons of Written Tycoon and just how much they've achieved. Uh, outstanding value, you can send a mare to him for under 25,000 and the astute breeders have really seen that and jumped on him this year. We'll have a story on the new Victorian farm, but that expansion sets great foundations for Widden's future. It was a big decision to move into Victoria, but a great opportunity there. There's so many good things happening um, in both states and uh, there's no reason you just have to be nailed to one of them. Um, we certainly see um, plenty of great things happening in Victoria like we have in New South Wales for many years. Um, so we want to be a part of all of that. Always great to see the wonderful Widden Stud inbred to win. And next week we'll visit their Victorian base and bring you New Stallion's Russian Camelot and Doubtland. Coming up on Bred to Win, the Cambridge Stud performance of the week and Rubik new to Swettenham Stud in Victoria this season. Bread to Win, supported by Prime Icon, a Group 1 winner of two and Derby winner of over $2 million, standing at Karingal Stud in 2021.
Elephant remains undefeated. The Cambridge Stud performance of the week was the quaintly named Elephant, a five-year-old gelding who likes to curl his lip like a trunk. Unbeaten in four starts in New Zealand, the son of Melbourne Cup winner Shocking made it five from five at Caulfield on Saturday. His dam Ticklish is a dual stakes winner, while Shocking stands this season at Rich Hill Stud in New Zealand at a fee of 8500 New Zealand dollars. With some big numbers coming through as yearlings and new season falls, in 2021, Swetnam Stud will stand a sire on the rise, the regally bred Rubik. By Encosta de Largo from a three-quarter sister to breed shaper Redoute's choice, Rubik has already sired the Everest winner in Yes, Yes, Yes. He joins barn mate I Am Invincible's I Am Immortal, whose first foals are just starting to arrive. you're a mainstay on the board of Thoroughbred Breeders Victoria. It must be such a boost seeing some of the fabulous mares coming into the state to support the growing ranks of quality stallions. That's right Caroline. Victoria has evolved with so many good new studs coming into onto the scene including I've got to say Widden have come down. Widden uh, New South Wales have come down to Victoria. We've got Leneva. We've obviously got the powerhouse of Dali Godolphin. We've got Yulong which is certainly a very very uh, influential sort of operation in Victoria and across actually across the globe. But Rosemount doing a great job with Anthony Mithen and you've got Spendthrift obviously the, the American side of things which are doing a great job as well with new stallions in Victoria this year. Rubik obviously. You've got Written Tycoon, Gailara, Earthlight, Hanseatic, Nikoni, Star Wit, Tagaloa, Doubtland, Russian Camelot. Gosh, it's the largest number of first season sires we've had in Victoria as well, Caroline. So Victoria is really sort of a come of age and I've got to say, you know, the broodmare farms here in the state are collecting some significant broodmare amounts and we are actually, you know, it's really punching above our weight and that is reflected across the sales of, um, of yearlings and a lot of Victorians doing particularly well. I mean, look at the uh, Look at the recent Magic Million sales. 52% of the broodmares uh, in that sale were purchased by Victorian uh, broodmare farms. And it's so good to see the gorgeous Rubik at Swetnam Stud this spring. He was so highly rated by Gerald Ryan and his team, he always had something very special about him, didn't he? Oh, he was a great racehorse. I mean, he was a January two-year-old, and when he won his first start at Ramwick, he then went on to run at Caulfield in the Blue Diamond Prelude, and he absolutely smashed them. And, uh, you know, he came from that into a three-year-old career. He raced in the Scalacci, beating Group 1 winners. He himself, being by, by, by the great Costa de Lago, out of a three-part sister to Redoot's choice, he just fixed the mark for, at his stage of his career, for where what we're looking for in Victoria, and especially at Swetnam. The count, yes, 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 takes the lead. And as a sire, of course, in his first crop, he hit the jackpot with Everest winner, yes, yes, yes. He was retired early to stud, Rubik, and uh, stood at 16 and a half thousand. And in his first crop, he produced yes, yes, yes. And not only yes, yes, yes within that, but Rubisaki and also Condos Express. But the great thing with him, I mean, he's got 175 two-year-olds and he's got over 200 yearlings at higher prices with better mares. So we really feel at Swetnam and really working in with Coolmore. Okay, he may not have had the greatest season this year, and we've seen it very much with likes of Piero, he did the same, and So You Think, who really just had a little bit flat spots in their fifth year. The numbers came through, and you see what they're doing at the moment. So we feel that we've got a very strong chance with this stallion Rubik, and being such a good looking horse and so fertile that we feel that he is a primed, proven horse which Victoria needs at that price. Standing Rubik in 2021, as you mentioned, continues the great relationship with Coolmore Stud that started back with your father, Robert Sangster, Vincent O'Brien and John Magnier. Oh, that's right. I've got to say with Tom Magna and uh, his wife Sophie and family, but all the staff at Coolmore, I have a very close relationship and that's 
that relationship is, is echoed all around the world with the Sangster and the Magno fa Magna family. It's something which is lovely to carry on that legacy and uh, Caroline, I've got to say, it's, uh, it's going to keep on passing because it's, uh, there's a lot more Sangsters around, uh, <laughs> not just in the Southern Hemisphere, but certainly a lot more in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, we're keeping on breeding and love the industry, but uh, certainly a lot of my family are getting involved with it in both hemispheres. It's just very lucky that we can get a horse down here in Victoria like that because he just fits the perfect Mark, in years to come, we'll look, reflect back on this interview and you'll say to me, gosh, Adam, do you remember that time in August when we, when we did the interview and you spoke about Rubik for the first time? I got, hasn't he done well? And all that uh, backing of the Victorian broodmare owners and obviously New South Wales and South Australian and Tasmanian ones coming to him this particular year in 2021 has proved successful. So yes, we're very happy with that. He really got his best book of quality mares on the back of these great successes, which is what makes him so exciting, Caroline. He has covered books of 250 plus in recent years at 35,000 and 30,000, with those progeny about to hit the track. I am immortal with 100 metres to go. I'm so pleased also to showcase I am immortal on bread to win. He is the only colt or entire by I am invincible to win two stakes races as a two year old. Oh, as you can see, he walked so magnificently and uh, he really did capture the imagination of uh, the racing public. But as a physical, he's got everything. And Sam Friedman always said that he had the greatest nature. And you can see he, he has got a great nature. He let done really well. We got him last year in 2020 in April and come the breeding season which sadly no one got to see him uh, due to COVID but he really had changed and uh, Ben Mason who did the vet check on him said to me he said Adam I've never seen such a windpipe as large as I'm an Immortals and you know you can see by putting your fist under, under his jaw that his jowl is enormous so you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of credentials and uh, he fits the same profile as his father. I'm invincible. And looking at your wonderful son of High Chaparral, Toronado, winner of the Sussex and the Queen Anne Stakes, he's now a sire of a Group 1 winner in Mask Crusader, who took out the William Reed. I'm sure the whole farm was watching that. With Mask Crusader, it was a great result for the farm and especially the breeders who supported him. And he's, gonna, he's got uh, some really great, really good horses coming through. Um, I think uh, Toronado is certainly on the cusp of becoming a, a great stallion. And of course, you know yourself, Caroline, through the great uh, Duncan Ramage, that, uh, that's that star line through So You Think. And of course, um, and Done Deal has done so well. And we, we it seems a star line which, which does work here in Australasia. And the thirst in Hong Kong is amazing. We were looking at figures today uh, that he's got 25, Toronado's got 25 of his progeny, Colts and Geldings, who've arrived in Hong Kong. And uh, so obviously it's taken a lot of a pool out of here of Victoria, but uh, there is a very, very large um, return on investment for breeders who get a Colt or Gelding, that Hong Kong is going to be very much looking at them. And by the time you come to sell your progeny, uh, those 25 and more would have, would have settled into Hong Kong climatized and will be winning the races. I know some very significant trainers have got them up there. But also his fillies are doing very well. They're matching very well his fillies and mares. So not just does he produce colts and geldings, he produces very good race fillies and race mares. And Highland Reel in the purple as Bass 2 on the inside. Highland Reel is having early winners up in Europe at the moment. You know, he got a little, probably a little bit lost in the, all the Galileos at Coolmore. And he, to think that he won seven group ones, he's still the highest earner out of Bally Doyle. Obviously the Victorian breeders really supported Highland Reel because he's got over 400 mares in his first three seasons. But I believe that Highland Reel is one at that price, which uh, really could be, could be a great investment for anybody looking to send their mare. He himself crosses and his bloodlines work so well with them. So make sure you look at our website or get onto that Group 1 gold mine because that certainly will produce a good, uh, a good match to your mare. Overall, the spring looks so promising for your wonderful Swettenham stud sires and the Victorian industry as a whole. There's plenty of success on the way for those investing in your stallions. We made a conscious decision a few years ago not to sell yearlings under the uh, Swettenham banner anymore. And uh, really it was to help our clients who've gone to all uh, the Swettenham sires so that when we're at the sales, we can actually help help our clients uh, and breeders sort of sell their horses in the yearling yards, not concentrating primarily on our own draft. We have a very good culture at Swettenham and, 
and, uh, and we hope that passes through into our clients and uh, people enjoy dealing with us because it's actually important that they can pick up the phone to myself, uh, I am visible, as well as Sam Matthews and Jason and all my team. But I think to get through to the principal at, uh, and to see me at any time, I think is also important because people, people enjoy dealing, uh, knowing who they're dealing with. The G1 gold mine analysis of Rubik's sire in Costa de Lago and the Knicks that have had the most success with his sire sons include highly regarded broodmare sire Charge Forward, who registers 6.9% Group 1 winners to runners and over 10% stakes winners to runners. Examples include champion sprinter Sun Knight and her sister Sistar and golden slipper winner She Will Reign. Another super cross with the Encosta de Lago line is Elusive Quality with 3.3% Group 1 winners to runners and over 13% stakes winners to runners, as exhibited by the Full Brothers and now successful Stallions shooting to win and deep field. Always a pleasure featuring Swettenham Start on Bread to Win. And a big thank you to Adam and the team and good luck for the new season. Coming up, Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing. Bread to Win, supported by Hanover Lodge, preparing the elite racehorse. This segment brought to you by Arrowfield Stud, the brand worth its weight in gold. The horse that made me fall in love with racing was 1992 Golden Slipper winner Burst. Trained by Clary Connors and owned by the Kelly family, she was tiny in size but had a huge heart. Her electric turn of foot was simply amazing and she went on to win the two-year-old Triple Crown. I was a 17 year old at that time and uh, it certainly ignited the passion for racing but more importantly for the Golden Slipper. Fast forward 15 years, in 2007, Derby Racing's first year of business, we syndicated a filly named Our Joan of Arc who won the Jim Crack Stakes, the Maribyrnong Plate and was unplaced in the Golden Slipper. 2016, a $10,000 purchase for Derby Racing, Yankee Rose finished runner up before winning two Group 1s and the following year in 2017, a freakishly fast filly named She Will Rain won the Golden Slipper. Uh, just two years later in 2019, we also finished fifth with Time to Rain, who uh, earlier captured the Silver Slipper. And I tell you what, the most amazing thing is to see the joy, passion, and exhilaration that the two year old racing brings to my owners. Uh, it's certainly been a lifelong dream to win the Golden Slipper. And that can all be attributed to one filly back when I was 17, name burst. That's it for this week's Bread to Win. Don't miss next week's show as we visit the breeders of Golden Slipper winner Stay Inside Kingstar Farm with an exciting new value sire, Time to Rain, and Widden Victoria, home to new stallions Russian Camelot and Doubtland in 2021. That's all next week. I'm Caroline Searcy. Look forward to seeing you then. Bread to Win, brought to you by Inglis. The 2022 Inglis Yearling Sales Series, entries now open.